Hare Krishna, Jai, 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 Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. So, welcome everyone. Welcome to what it appears to be the 26th quality of a devotee, of the perfect gentleman of Srila Prabhupada. So we're again so happy, so happy to be able to share this Akadashi day with you. Uh, to hear and to glorify and to to take in the qualities of Srila Prabhupada that uh, that guide us in in our path of becoming uh, real devotees of Krishna. So again, I I'm very happy to be with my friend Siddhanta Prabhu. Uh, we're at the end of the 26th, but we we do have an announcement at the end about. Uh, not ending. <laughs> okay, so but let's go on to uh, to to today's uh, program. Great. Well, thank you again, and uh, welcome everybody to the last quality of a uh, our podcast, a perfect gentleman podcast, and hosted wonderfully by Pancharat Prabhu, who I really appreciate and hosting this and giving his comments and it realizations. It is a great pleasure. Hare Krishna. So today, uh, the quality that we're going to focus on is. The Vaishnav, perfect gentleman, is poetic. Poetic. Now, I'm focusing on two definitions of this word so we can uh, take stories from the memory series that reflect these two definitions of poetic. The first one being the typical definition of poetic as a standalone adjective that describes someone who writes in verse that has an imaginative or emotional style of expression. And we're going to end the podcast with that particular uh, focus in mind about the typical understanding definition of poetic. But the second definition that we're going to start with today will be that we will explore poetic, which is being used as an adjective describing a noun. And in this case, we're going to use the noun justice, as in poetic justice, meaning experiencing a fitting or deserved retribution for one's actions. So let us start with those stories, starting with Brahmananda, and in this order, Brahmananda first, then Yadavara, uh, Jadarani, Devidasi, Sikhi Mahiti, and then today we're going to have a surprise disciple, so you got to hang around for, the, for that uh, devotee oh, stories. Okay. So let's begin and talk about the first one, story from Brahmananda on the other side. Hare Krishna. One day I was going to work. I would go every day to, to work to New York City, a board of education. And um, uh, one day I saw there was a newspaper just lying there in the subway. Uh, I wasn't reading it. I'd stopped reading the newspapers. It was the New York Times, and there was a picture of Dr. Radhakrishnan. And uh, I just uh, snatched it up, I started reading, and uh, it was Dr. Radhakrishnan uh, retires. He was the president of India. And I, oh, I ran back to the temple with it to show to Prabhupada, because Prabhupada had been telling us all about Radha, Dr. Radhakrishnan. He had so much contact with him, and he had asked him to you know, join in this movement. And Dr. Radhakrishnan was the, you know, Pukka Mayavadi, he, the deluded scholar, you know, who, who said not to Krishna, the unborn within Krishna, and Prabhupada said so many things. And, uh, but Prabhupada had told us that he had invited Dr. Radhakrishnan to preach Krishna consciousness. And Dr. Radhakrishnan told Prabhupada, when I retire, then I will do it. And here I am riding on the subway to New York in my job, and there's the newspaper right staring me in the face, Dr. Radhakrishnan retires. So I t took the article and Prabhupada wrote him a letter uh, inviting him to take up Krishna consciousness. And, 
But whatever happened, nothing, nothing came of that. But then later when Prabhupada went to India on his tour of South India, he went to see Dr. Radhakrishna. And um, you know the story, how he was incapacitated and so on. You know, that he, was, he had gotten a stroke and he couldn't even speak. He was paralyzed. And uh, Prabhupada said, because he, could, he cannot, now he cannot speak because he is Mayavad. This is what Krishna has. He spoke so much nonsense and now he cannot speak. He has poetic justice, <laughs> very much. Yeah, he's so much nonsense now, the justice, <laughs> zip. <laughs> Hare Krishna. He had his chance too. He had yeah. his chance to, uh, you know, Prabhupada called him and said, you know, now you got your chance, but yes, Krishna, Krishna dispenses. But I think you know, like you're saying, that as a quality of of uh, of a Vaishnava, also, is uh, that uh, by the influence of a Vaishnava, Krishna dispenses the poetic justice too. Right. So. And even what's amazing to me is also that Prabhupada knew he was a Mayavadi, but still he wanted to engage, as he's trying to yeah. engage everybody yeah. in Krishna's yeah. service, and so yeah, uh, giving him that chance, but save him. He wouldn't yeah. take. Now let's listen to Yadavar Prabhu, who I recently interviewed in uh, Alachua, the second time. It was about mm. uh, maybe 15, 20 years after I interviewed him for the first time. And he gives a, uh, a new anecdote that uh, was not given to me um, the first time we talked. And this one yes. is also fitting for Prabhupada or Krishna being poetic, poetic justice. So I went into Prabhupada's room, paid obeisances, and he started talking about the Bombay project, how important it was, and the difficulties he had in securing that property. By this time, Mr. Nair had passed away. And uh, Prabhupada then said something extraordinary to me. He said, Mr. Nair was such a rascal that I prayed to Lord Nishringadev that he be punished. And my, I was just stunned. Uh, and afterwards, that story is well known. I heard that when Prabhupada got the news by telephone in New Zealand, that he put his hands together and said, Jaina Sringadev. Um, one devotee said, I, I thought that Vaishnavas don't curse anyone. So Prabhupada didn't curse anyone, he just prayed to his Lord. And his Lord did what he wanted to do. Yes, yeah, Srila Prabhupada's, uh, uh, I mean, there, there's, there's so much po poetry in this as well, and you know, the, the, the uh, juxtaposition of things and how, how Srila Prabhupada's life just unfolds in a, you know, I, I'm sure one day someone will make a uh, poetic rendition of, of Prabhupada's life, like uh, in, in Sanskrit verse. Now let's listen to Jadarani as uh, she explains poetic justice, I think, uh, directly towards her, more of a Prabhupada dispensing the poetic justice at this time. Yes. Let's listen to Jadarani. Then uh, around the same time in Boston, um, I was in his room with Govinda Dasi, and he had his trunk desk and there was a little ant walking across his desk. And I was starting to attempt to kind of like brush him off the desk. And Prabhupada said, no, let him play. But it was too late. I was already brushing. And so I squashed him. And I felt so bad, like that's a brother. And this is in front of a person who sees the soul. And then, um, he didn't look very happy with me. And then Govinda said, so did he immediately get another body? And Prabhupada said, yes, at once transferred. And then I just started apologizing over and over again, but Prabhupada would not look up at me. Hare Krishna. Yeah. Teaching in, in every... Uh... 
every instance. Ants and Prabhupada. I'm sure that's a topic. I mean, we'll get to that. <laughs> okay, right. But the ant got poetic justice too, in a positive way. Because justice can be is meted out both as punishment, but also as as a compensation. And so uh, this ant <laughs> got the compensation part of it to go right. upward. Right. This next story is from Siki Mahiti Prabhu, uh, who was going to tell us a story from Chicago when he was distributing books there. And mm -hmm. uh, this one uh, we'll talk about on the other end, but this one is uh, another dispensation of the um, poetic justice via the Supreme Lord. So we go to the airport, there's probably 60 to 100 devotees with kirtan in the airport. And in those days, you could go up to the terminal. And I remember, uh, of course, when there were kirtan and the media's there, and television stations, big scene in the airport. And I particularly remember the police because we would distribute books in the airport. And so we're always conscientious of the police and trying to avoid them or what are their reactions. And I'm looking at the whole scene and I remember the policemen just standing over there with those faces. Like, I can't believe these people, or how dare they? Even the people walking through the airport are really just giving us the look like, you people, what is wrong with you? But the devotees are absorbed in just kirtan and anticipation of waiting for Prabhupada. And, and even myself, it was, you know, the first time you're going to see the pure devotee, the, the person you've been reading the books or the person you've been serving. And the video gave you a little sense of what he's like, but it's nothing like what it is when you see him in person. I think that, that was really the, one of the biggest realizations I got when we finally saw him. So anyway, plane lands. It's pulling up to the terminal. I believe Prabhupada came off first. I think they would give him the courtesy of coming off first. And uh, doors are opening, and the kirtan is building up. Hey, Jai Prabhupada, Prabhupada. It's really... And then you see Prabhupada, and he's in front somehow or another. Maybe I think one devotee is in but there's not any... And of course, naturally, you're going to give that big reaction that you would when you're greeting someone. But the most amazing thing to me was his reaction when you see someone who doesn't have a false ego when he when he comes through he doesn't react the same way we would like if i'm coming through there and there's 100 people having cured down for me you know either you're gonna big smile oh, oh thank you you know or you're gonna act like oh no i'm not affected but there's typical reactions that everybody does and everybody interacts like that that's part of the social aspect of an event. Prabhupada didn't do any of those things. So it's mine, but you're, you're stunned because I'm stunned. Look, I go, but you weren't offended. I, don't, you, I can't describe, you have to be there. That's the only way you can describe it. You have to be there to see the interactions. Then you see that this person is transcendental. He is not ordinary. And I, I, in the video, you can see he's older. So you expect him to kind of walk like an old person. But he's walking just like a young man, you know, with the cane. I'm thinking, he doesn't even need the cane. Why does he have it in the first place? And he's, you know, it's, it's just, I'm in awe. I'm, and you're, you don't know what to do because you're, he's not reacting the way you expect. So you just kind of stand there like this. And I see him come around the corner and he's turning. And as he turns, I catch those policemen that were standing like this. Now all of a sudden you see them, they're serving. They're walking with Prabhupada. Step back, move back, making everybody move. And they're totally changed. Everybody's changed. The TV reporters, all the carmies, all that defensiveness, that offensiveness, they're gone. And uh, of course, you know, in the airport, he, in the, at least that time, he went straight to the car, a little bit of an interview in the car, and he left and we ran back to the temple. But I remember afterwards uh, in the airport, those policemen that were there, attitudes totally changed in, in the airport. They weren't any more, um, you know, harassers like they used to. Well, I heard with the exception of one person, someone said, they said a few weeks later he died from heart attack. 
The only one that didn't change. <laughs> but the rest of them, just from seeing Prabhupada once, that was it. That was it. So that's a, that moment's association of, with a pure devotee. There's so much poetry. There's, there's so much poetry in that, uh, that uh, mem memory. First of all, there's Prabhupada's poetry. There's also poetry in motion. So, you know, the, his, and I think this could be a whole series, you know, how Srila Prabhupada's every move was poetic and just the way he would eat. <laughs> and particularly here, his, his walking in. And he won over those policemen with his poetry in his appearance. Right. And yes. the poetic justice was there too for the one who didn't. <laughs> I mean, I'm speculating, guy. but who knows? So. <laughs> yeah. Who knows? Who knows? Yeah. I mean, we as devotees think, ah, yes, yes. yes. You know, he Krishna, didn't surrender. Behind <laughs> he didn't surrender. Yeah. All right, Krishna. So now I'm going to present uh, to the audience here and to you a surprise disciple and uh, discuss how Prabhupada dispensed his poetic justice to this individual. So stay tuned, and we'll talk about it on the other side. I was living in New York for the first five years, more or less, of my devotional life. And I, at one point, I became responsible for fundraising for ISKCON Food Relief. So I began to develop a, a strategy to try to raise money from corporations. And I thought, well, they wouldn't relate to Krishna. So I came up with this idea, I'll, I'll, I'll make a letterhead that just says ISKCON on it. And I actually rented an address on 51st Street in Manhattan. So I put and a telephone number. So I put the address of such a da 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 da, East 51st Street, New York, New York. Center. And I attempt. I made some letter appointments, and I so I didn't actually raise any money. So Srila Prabhupada visited New York a few months later, and I was in in my office. And I think it was Brahmananda came up the stairs and said, Srila Prabhupada wants to see you. And he didn't really, he said, he's, he's, he didn't really explain it to me as I remember. So I, but I, I, I sensed that there was something going on. So I went down and that, that letterhead was on, <laughs> was on Prabhupada's table. <laughs> and he looked at me and he said, uh, you have done this? And I said, yes. <laughs> so where is International Society for Krishna Consciousness? Where is Founder Acharya? And I said, I, I don't know if I even tried to explain. <laughs> All I remember is saying, so you won't do this again? <laughs> And, and so, yes, I, uh, I've never done it again, and I've always told people about it because it was, you know, a, a lesson about the importance of always associating ISKCON with its full name, International Society for Christian Consciousness. Of course, we, we do use ISKCON as it is, but when we have, wherever practical and possible, we should recognize Srila Prabhupada. It's the founder Charya. So that was a that was a, a good lesson. Yes, that was a surprise. <laughs> you remember that moment? Okay. Yes, I, I do, I do. And there certainly was poetry in, in that justice. I mean, for one is is that the way in which uh, I received the justice, right? Was uh was very conscient. I mean Shil Prabhupada, I, I believe he was quite gentle with me. Mm -hmm. You know, he he uh, he just put, you know, more like a haiku, you know, you did this, 
this is wrong. Don't do it. You know, it was it was uh, concise, simple, but it drove home, really drove home. Yeah, I guess, you know, uh, poetry could be also described uh, in various ways where this was a, a simple poem. Yes. And the words were short and sweet. Short, sweet, and to the point. You got the message. Delivering. So, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Hare <laughs> Krishna. The second portion of our podcast today, where Prabhupada is being described as poetic, will be the typical meaning that most people think of the word poetic regarding mm. someone who writes in verse that has an imaginative or emotional style of expression. One quality that we discuss when we discuss the qualities of a pure devotee is poetic. And um, I've been thinking a lot about that lately, uh, how our lives as devotees are poetic lives beyond the, uh, the philosophy and the scriptures and discussion about fine points of theology. And when, when you arrive at Krishna's lotus feet, all of that kind of falls to the side and you enter a world of poetry and, and dance and song and, and art and, and nature. You know, Mahaprabhu used to embrace trees, uh, calling them his beloved, you know, thinking that here is Krishna. Um, and uh, Prabhupada was very poetic. Um, and uh, memories of those moments are a great solace to me in, in separation from him. Uh, I remember one time, it was probably the first time I met him in Paris back in 70, 71. Uh, we were discussing art and I was asking him, what is, uh, what is the definition of art and Krishna consciousness? And it, it's, it's a longer discussion. I won't go into the whole discussion about it. But at one point, he, there was a vase of roses on his desk. He lifted one of the roses and, and I watched him look at this rose and he kind of twirled it between his fingers and he was appreciating the shape of each petal and the symmetry uh, of the flower. It was a beautiful red rose. And he held it up to me and smiled and said, just see Krishna's artistry. And then he smelled it. I said, how does this flower know to pick this one particular scent from the earth? There are so many different fragrances in the earth. How did this flower know to pick this one fragrance? And he smelled it again. And I'm watching him. I couldn't blink. It's just the most beautiful thing. Uh, and, you know, there's a book of Prabhupada's poetry. I don't, I don't know if people realize that he wrote a lot of poems. I believe it was published. But if you probably did a Google search for Prabhupada poetry, you'll find quite a bit of it. Um, that's, that's a great comfort, also looking back now, uh, recognizing that um, what he gave us was more than philosophy, more than the uh, mechanics of uh, reorganizing our lives in a way that's favorable to spiritual advancement. He also gave us an aesthetic. He gave us a, uh, a, a beautiful way of living that... Um, I think if more people just were exposed to the beauty of Krishna and the world of Krishna, um, there would be less hatred and violence. So we can be thankful for that as well. I emphatically say to you, O oh brothers, you will obtain your good fortune from the Supreme Lord Krishna only when Srimata Radharani becomes pleased with you. By his strong desire, the holy name of Lord Garunga will spread throughout all the countries of the Western world. In all the cities, towns, and villages on the earth, from all the oceans, seas, rivers, and streams, 
everyone will chant the holy name of Krishna. As the vast mercy of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu conquers all directions, a flood of transcendental ecstasy will certainly cover the land. When all the sinful, miserable living entities become happy, the Vaishnava's desire is then fulfilled. O oh Lord Krishna, you are my eternal companion. Forgetting you, I have suffered the kicks of Maya birth after birth. If today the chance to meet you occurs again, then I will surely be able to rejoin you. O oh dear friend, in your company, I will experience great joy once again. In the early morning, I will wander about the cowherd pastures and fields. Running and frolicking in the many forests of Raja, I will roll on the ground in spiritual ecstasy. Oh, when will that day be mine? Oh, so beautiful. So beautiful. That is, yeah, to bring out. Anyway, thank you so much. Thank you. That was such a fitting conclusion to the uh, the 26 qualities of a perfect gentleman. Jai, well, thank you for watching. Uh, please bless Siddhanta Prabhu to, to continue this uh, effort. And it, not just in this series, but in the entire memories uh, work that he's taken up. And there's ways to support it. There are books to buy. There's you know, uh, USBs to, to get. This, uh, just send a donation and, uh, and help out so that uh, this important work can continue. Right. Well, we are a, uh, legally a nonprofit organization now. So if anyone yeah. wants to support it and uh, be able to fly around the world and collect more of these interviews, uh, we will send uh -huh. you a tax deductible letter that you can uh, apply towards your taxes. Okay. And this so, is, you know, that that's the end of the year is coming up. Right. Right. So, you know, to look at your calculation and say, hey, we've got to make a, a Christmas gift or whatever before right. the end of uh, December. And so right. all the information is in, in, in the... Uh, in the no, site, right? You can go to PrabhupadaMemories.com and there's yeah. a little box there that says donate. So uh, donate. thanking you in advance. Okay, thank you. Hare Krishna. Jai. 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 Jai.